Moran jumped. <laughs> Joanna knows how sex works? <laughs> but my thoughts exactly. What's up, guys? It's Kickter. I'm here with my beautiful girlfriend, Stitch. I bet you thought this was going to be another wonderful Stitch PowerPoint video. No. Instead, today, I made the PowerPoint. <laughs> we both read The Husky and His White Cat Chisholm Volume 6. You'll never guess what this volume ends with perhaps a chapter that will lead to volume seven? <laughs> what a good guess. <laughs> Shizun, would you still love me if I were a worm? Moran, I don't even love you as a child. <laughs> 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 but how great earthworms are. Earthworms are great. They fertilize. They do something with the soil. I remember that. I think so. For some reason, as a child, you learn a lot about earthworms. Yeah, generally. I think they decompose stuff. The worm poop in the soil. Enough about worm poop. Okay, okay. anyways. We're here for shiz and fucking. <laughs> okay. Starting off with Chu Anning waking up the morning after the confession. He is staring at Moran still asleep and we get a glimpse of his memories of young Moran. Aww. This was back when Moran was begging Chu Anning to take him as a disciple. Please, 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 please. please. <laughs> Moran starts sweeping at Red Lotus Pavilion every morning and Chu Anning usually ignores him. But there is a cute scene where Moran has an umbrella for Chu Anning when it's raining and Chu Anning takes it from him to use and then makes a rain repellent array for Moran. So he actually takes pity on him and takes his umbrella. Like, I think that's so cool because it's like, obviously I could do this for myself. Yeah. You didn't need to do this, but... He took kind of a, 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 little a subtle flex mm -hmm. and also a sweet moment. Absolutely. Okay. Then later on, Chuane asks what Moran is doing and Moran is saving the earthworms. Do you remember this scene? Oh yes. He's saving the earthworms and Chuane is like, this is a good boy. A boy who cares about the earthworms. Do you know what they do for the soil? <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> setting us up for a good farmer. <laughs> yes. So this was formative for Chu Anning, and after that he is moved by this moment and is when he decides to take Moran on as a disciple because he wants to save the earthworms. Aww. Oh, now you really feel this disappointment in this disciple later on. Yeah, like, right? More on what happened to saving the earthworms. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> and like, obviously I took that as Chu Anning is all about saving those not as strong as him. You know, he makes the automatons for like the weaker clans and normal people yeah. so that they can still be saved and values them. And so Moran caring about little earthworms shows he had a good heart. Do you think he made the anti-rain array for the earthworms? <laughs> <laughs> Earthworms like rain, though. They they drown. I guess they come out in the rain. Yes. I actually don't know anything about earthworms. Chu Anning would hate me. <laughs> we get the Chu Anning saying fuck award. I remember that he says fuck. I right? cannot for the life of me remember why he says fuck. I'm going to guess it has something to do with like, fuck, I'm in love with Moran. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. You know, people always talk about him like he's so pious, but he's really not. He literally says for fuck's sake. <laughs> That's not even just fuck. For fuck's sake is like has a totally different sort of casual connotation to yeah. it. So Chu Anning says this during his inner monologue when he is wondering why the hell Moran would like him. That's so sad. <laughs> Something he considers is if he feels like he has to pay him back for saving his life. But then he says, for fuck's sakes, surely it couldn't be because Moran had confessed to Shimei and been rejected. Oh, like for Chu Anning to say, for fuck's sake, am I just... Second fiddle? <laughs> second, <laughs> second earthworm to Shime? <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> so he says this while he is contemplating his own burning desire for Moran. Uh, Chu Anning's point of view always has the sappiest poetic language about love. It's literally so beautiful. And so he knows how hard it is to completely give up love. He tried with Moran, but found it impossible to completely mm. stop loving someone. So he is a bit nervous about Moran still liking Shime, or doesn't understand why he would have a sudden switch up. He's like, I couldn't stop loving Moran. So how could Moran just stop loving Shimei? That's so romantic, right? Like, even his doubts and worries come from such a place of deep love and devotion. Right? Chu Anning, the man you are. <laughs> hey, my favorite guy. Stitch's favorite guy. I was so happy when he reappeared. Like all my needs were met. I'm like, close the book. I don't need any shizm fucking. This is all I want. <laughs> <laughs> How's this venerable one's whiskeys? How's this venerable one's noggin? As described, melodramatic wailing. So, a favorite character has returned. Chu Anning's paper dragon. So, we know Chu Anning does not ride on a sword. Well, it's finally time to leave the island, and he needs a form of transportation, so he busts out his paper dragon. However, this paper dragon always fights with him. 
So while he's commanding him to transform, he just won't do it. So Chu Anning hits him with a little burst of fire to threaten him, and he freaks out and he yelps, How's this Venerable One's whiskeys? How's this Venerable One's nugget? I love this because I will overthink the existence of the paper dragon far beyond what probably even Meat Bun fathom. For example, like, is this some sort of like spiritual kind of non entity he created? through like science, you know? Like, is it like of his own mind and imagination and skills? Did he like engineer even its personality? Is it created in that sense? In which case, why would you make it like that? <laughs> the fact that it's so non-compliant. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's his own guy and his own guy still fights against him. It's right? just, it's so chuaning. So yes, he finally caves in and we can see an absolutely epic moment of chuaning riding a fucking dragon and the picture of it is super cool too. It's super cool. I love how epic it is that it like immediately terrifies children, sends yes. them into tears. Yes, exactly. And there's a really cute scene where a little boy gets scared of Chu Anning because he is threatening this little dragon. And the little boy whispers to Moran to tell you a secret, I don't like him. And Moran whispers back to tell you a secret, I really do. Ah! He's Isn't like, that... more for me, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so That's sweet, so though? That's so sweet. I love that so much. And it's like the first time Moran is like telling someone that he likes Chu Anning, too. It's like, it's a secret to everyone, but he's like, I can get away with telling this little kid. It's so cute. In the previous book, there was the huge fire at Rufeng sect. So all those people took refugee at the island and now it's time for them to go back. So they're taking the refugees from the fire and traveling them back to their homes now. Also, accurate depiction <laughs> to note, Moran and Shuimeng are friends now. F -f -f friends <laughs> Yes, Mu Ching. And Chu Anning is like, what the hell is going on? There is a really sweet scene where Moran made some food for Shui Meng because he is still hella injured from being a part of the whole Rufeng arc. He got a chess piece put in him. So he's like really kind of spiritually fucked up. Mm -hmm. and, and Moran gives him some food. Aww. And Chu Anning is like, what the <laughs> fuck? Because <laughs> Chu Anning assumed the food was for him. And he's like, no, I wanted to go eat in there. And Moran's like, oh, sorry, this is for Shui Meng. And he's like, <laughs> you don't even like Shui Meng. Yeah. It's like the mother of a dysfunctional family. Like, what's going on? Why yeah. you guys, like, like, what's broken in this house that I don't know about for you two to be getting along? <laughs> right? Okay, look at this picture. <laughs> the dark side of chess. When is a grandmaster not so grand? <laughs> Speaking of chess pieces, Moran is an expert in the Zhenglong technique that was used by Xu Sheng Lin. So he begins to talk about the chess formation with Chu Anning. And Chu Anning, there is a moment here where he's like a little bit like, why does Moran know so much about this? Mm -hmm. It's just a little tidbit of like suspicion pretty early in the volume. He notes the way that Moran speaks about it is a little bit odd. That's all. Moran seemed to know a bit too much and speak a bit too lightly. So I think. As the audience, this is like some pretty good dramatic irony of knowing Chu Anning kind of has a mm -hmm. too. And we also know that Chu Anning is also experiencing like weird visions of like the past. They're often sexy <laughs> or not sexy. But they always involve sexual. Sex. Yeah. <laughs> but Moran has no idea that Chu Anning mm -hmm. might have some sort of time and space fuckery going on too. Only the reader knows that, which is interesting. <laughs> Sappy ran one hour. Okay. There are lines like this now where we know Moran and Chuanning like each other. Insane, I know. <laughs> so, where are we going? I don't want to go out. I don't either, Moran said, rubbing his nose. He chuckled warmly. As long as it's with you, anywhere's good. Chuanning would never admit that his heartbeat quickened at those words, but he did gaze a fraction too long into those dark and shining eyes. Oh, It's just like they haven't kissed. They haven't done anything romantic or sexual yet, but there's these little moments of just love between them and they're just open and there's no like sarcastic or downward feeling afterwards. It's just like, I'm happy to be with you. I'm happy to be with you too. Oh my God, <laughs> so good. It's just so sappy and romantic and it's just the tip of the iceberg. However, the tip, eh? <laughs> oh, oh my God. Moran actually invented that idiom. <laughs> I'm sure he did. However, Moran is also being extremely courteous to Chu Anning and proper. Things like where he used to reach out and clean off Chu Anning's mouth for him. Yeah, I always do that to teachers I hate too. <laughs> uh, now he is very respectful and stops his hands from ever touching him. And this properness is unnerving Chu Anning. 
it's so good because it's like like yeah you could get away with things when your feelings are out and open but now now yo, that's embarrassing right now that's like a little too much that's like coming on to shizun you're right can't do that such gentle handling gave chuaning the vague impression of being treated like a ceramic figure that had been shattered and slowly pieced back together as though moran was terrified as sudden move would crush chuaning to pieces and grind him to dust I mean, he's to like there he sees chuaning pretty close to dust <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chuaning's like, choke me! <laughs> Chuaning, however, is enjoying how slow everything is moving and thinks to himself that if real life was as fiery and passionate as his sexy dreams, he wouldn't be able to handle it. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. However, this path of carefulness must come to an end eventually. You're gonna fuck up eventually, Mara. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's a great part. <laughs> I love Chuanin so much. So fucking much. Yeah. Okay? That was the funniest thing I had ever read. <laughs> and do you recognize what this image is from? It is from the audio drama Ghost Rut from Heaven Official's Blessing. Willie. Really? Yes. So I've included that for a reason. So mm -hmm. Chuaning is walking out of the dinner hall with a peach when Moran suddenly grabs him into an alleyway and he drops the peach he was holding and yelps, <laughs> my peach. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just so funny? So freaking funny. <laughs> However, Moran here is like so sexy. He is being all husky and is like shizun with his blazing breath and scalding heat. His voice burnt to a crisp by the fires of lust. Oh my God. Right? Crispy lust. My favorite. <laughs> and then he says, it hurts. Okay. You you know, I see I see the, the ghost rut connector mm -hmm. there. I think that's so hot. Right. Like, oh, you just you can't contain it anymore. Exactly, exactly. Physically painful, mentally, emotionally painful. It reminded me a little bit of the ghost rut scene of where it's like, there's just so much lust inside of him that he needs to like get it out somehow. <laughs> but instead of a, a ghost ride, it's more on just being Regular mega horny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chu Anning says, what's wrong? Where does it hurt? And he says, only a little Napa cabbage will do. Don't call me a cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, who are you calling a cabbage? Yeah, who are you calling? That is, it took me out. Okay, first we have the peach. I'm barely recovered from the peach, trying to focus on the horniness of the scene. And then, who are you calling a cabbage? Like, Chu running truly is somehow the most unsexiest man alive, and yet so ethereally beautiful. <laughs> who are you calling a cabbage? He's like, I'm like this close to just bending you in half. <laughs> but Moran is like, it's like he's in heat. He's like, I missed you so much. I want to spend time with you. I can't even touch you. Stay with me. Don't go. And Chu Anning is so overwhelmed by this and his masculine scent. He can't even speak until he's finally like, okay, let me go. <laughs> but it takes him a moment where he's like oh sniffing god. him and he's like, oh my god. Oh my god. This could happen. Yeah. And he's like, absolutely not. <laughs> and then Moran finally lets him go. And he has a boner. <gasps> no way. And Chu Anning realizes it and he gets so embarrassed he leaves in a huff. Embarrassed Chu Anning is my favorite Chu Anning. Right? So it was a win 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 situation for me. Really. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, the kids' table! The kids' table, yes. <laughs> okay. The village chief makes sure that the heroes who brought back the refugees stay for dinner. She may sits at the kids' table. <laughs> of course he does. Someone has to teach those kids manners. Well, <laughs> she may makes room for Moran to sit with him, and Moran just says, I'm gonna sit with Shizun. And then Chu Anning says, Aren't you going to sit with She May? And Moran says, Why would I? <laughs> Which is crazy. The switch up is crazy. But and then it says, This response swiftly cheered Chu Anning. And I love that for him. He's like, Yeah, fuck She May. I love you, She May. But fuck She May. <laughs> yeah. Also, though, like being jilted like that, I felt for Shime for sure. But like, what is happening? What the stars? What is going on? Mm -hmm. Then Shizun, uh, I'm calling him Shizun now. <laughs> <laughs> Chuanning says, "I thought the dishes over there would be more to your taste." And Moran says, "My taste is to sit wherever you are." Then he puts a hand on his thigh. <laughs> oh my god! But also before this, Moran knew the food wasn't going to be to Chuanning's taste. Little baby, you can't have anything hot at all. And so he went to the kitchen beforehand and specifically made Chuanning soup dumplings. 
I think that is one of my favorite moments, not only in this volume, but in the entire book thus far. Mm -hmm. Love is stored in the soup dumplings. It really is. And Meat Bun knows this, and Meat Bun is so right oh, yeah. for that. Chuaning is so touched. It's like now that everything is out in the open, Chuaning can see these nice efforts and accept them and allow himself to be really happy by them. He's still flustered, but it's not like he's being mean or assuming the worst. He knows Moran likes him and is being sweet to him. <laughs> so good, right? He made him soup dumplings that weren't spicy. And he can fully accept them as someone who... As a love token. Yeah. This part is so good. It's the lead up to the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like my, <laughs> my little imagery here? This is so good. I love your PowerPoints. I'm gonna start making you read all the books. <laughs> <laughs> so as they're taking their leave for dinner, there is a play being put on. No one wants to watch it, but Moran. <laughs> <laughs> and Chuaning surprises everyone by being like, well, why don't we stay a little longer? Because he knows Moran wants to see it. That's so sweet. And it's like, just the little things like this. They're so cute. But Shime wants to go. <laughs> and he gets in a tiny argument with Chuaning over it. But is quickly like, okay, fine. Like, whatever. Whatever Shizen says. Yeah. Shime is so real for that. Yeah. Like, like we could miss. We could skip the traffic if we leave now. <laughs> But then someone spills tea all over Shime. She was just having the shittiest night. No one sits with him. They won't leave. <laughs> gets tea spilled on him. But now at least he gets to go. And this is so funny because Chuaning is also not enjoying the play. And he thinks, wow, that was a really good method. I should bump into someone and get them to spill their tea on me so I can leave too. <laughs> I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna try that sometime. Instead of watching the play, he starts watching Moran and notices that he's smiling. And then Moran sees that Chuaning is smiling at him and he smiles back even brighter. These two are so sweet. It makes my teeth ache. Right? Oh, it took six volumes, but finally, some good fucking food. <laughs> and Moran knows that Chuaning probably wants to leave and is like, we can go soon. And Chuaning's like, no, let's stay longer. And as the play gets more boisterous, so does the crowd. And someone actually grabs Chuaning in excitement, just like, oh yeah, the play's so awesome. God. And Chuaning doesn't want to cause a scene or hurt anybody. And so he's kind of at a loss for what to do, even though he does not want to be touched again. Moran saves him by coming up behind him and pulls him close to shield him from the crowd. Ugh! so good That's it's so, so good. good a little hug from behind oh and they stay there so close for a while and moran wraps his arms around him and holds him close and kisses his ear we've gone so far beyond things that you can do with your shizen in public <laughs> <laughs> just, it's the crowd no one can see no, them in the no crowd one can see them. it's dark this is like true first boyfriend like I'm so glad Chuan and got to experience the steps like in this way. Yeah. Like, of course, there was the super dramatic dying, saving everybody stuff, but now it feels kind of like they're on a first date. Like when there was first the confession scene, I spent a lot of time wondering, like, oh, what is it going to be like after this? Because in my mind, it felt like okay, either Chuan could be so embarrassed that he like is like really evasive and then Moran's also really awkward and has like a whole guilt spiral and maybe it's like worse for a little bit or like do they just jump straight to boning yeah. I don't I don't know I thought those were like the two main options but mm -hmm. this is so perfect the romance unfolds just so beautifully so this is where Chuaning is still having doubts of why does Moran suddenly not like Shime like why is it me and Moran as if he can read his mind says the one I've liked is always you. It's always been you. I was just too stupid to figure it out. I'm sorry I made you wait for so long. Oh my god. <sighs> and then we get Chu Anning's thoughts, and he thinks he had never wanted any lengthy explanation. All he wanted was this simple acknowledgement from the one he loved. So to abruptly receive it turned everything around him into a whirling kaleidoscope of color the oil paint intensely leaving him unable to think or move, dazed beyond hope of recovery. The description on all of Chuan's feelings. Chef's kiss. It's just like, wow, he really likes me, shapes and colors! <laughs> <laughs> and I love that although his need for reassurance runs so deep, it's also something that can be satisfied so easily. Like, he can really take a crumb of affection and earnestness and treasure that in his heart of hearts. Which is so sad that all it's, <laughs> all he needed was a crumb. Okay, now, their first real kiss! <laughs> the dichotomy here. 
Then it crash cuts <laughs> to them suddenly making out in the woods. I'm like, I'm like, did I skip a page? What? I know. Like, I wish, I kind of wish we got like the, the little fumbling beforehand, but I feel like this is just so accurate to like what it would have been like for Chu Anning to experience this. Just like feeling so much love and and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, we're kissing. <laughs> I fucking blacked out. How did we get here? Yeah. I love that Meat Bun did this. It felt so in the moment with Chu Anning's feeling everything and suddenly they're not in the crowd and they're just kissing so hard. And I was curious with how their first kiss with feelings would go and it was it was so insanely good. The scene is also so long and they're just kissing and making out. And Chu Anning is refusing to let Moran lead which is so funny. I thought that was so funny. Yeah. It's, you know, he's in his head too much. Yeah. Like, like it's happening, but he still feels like he has to play this certain role. Mm -hmm. And honey, that is not how that's going to go for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let Moran take the wheel. It's gonna be okay. In the end, Moran laughs because Chu Anning is such an awful kisser, but he finds it adorable. But Chu Anning says, was I not good? That killed me killed me made right. me ill made me sick it's so it feels so good for them to kiss for them to reach this point emotionally and physically in the relationship but i also love that it's like you could say like oh it's it's kind of ruined or it wasn't perfect it wasn't like a magical romantic storybook moment it was but like logistically it was kind of a hot mess yeah and i love that it feels like very real realistic and it feels like it's intimate and revealing of how much everything is safe and okay between them like you can be a shitty kisser and fuck up and it's gonna be okay yeah <laughs> the absolutely. first time doesn't have to be like perfect for it to be real yes and moran assures him by saying laughter isn't the only reaction i'm having <laughs> fucking boner from his awful kiss. Boner time. <laughs> then Moran grabs him and pulls him flush against him. They'd only been pressed together waist up, but now they are pressing everything together. Like two Lego bricks. <laughs> they kiss for a really long time, <laughs> and Moran begs to let him stay at Red Lotus Pavilion. Oh my god, let me come over. Let me go home with you. Stop. And Chuanning uses the last of his sanity to not let that happen. <laughs> I love him holding out. Yes, and, and Chuanning says that it was tempting, but he came on too fast. So he's like... He is like, not before marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But I love that he also like, was tempted. It's not like he was like, no, oh my god, that's like too scary to think of. He was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And this is a excerpt says, he knew that his bowstring had already been drawn to its limit. If he turned around now, he'd lose all control, desire spilling past the dam. Never again would he have the will to push away the man before him. Ugh, so good. So I, I need to maintain to control somehow. <laughs> I have to stop now or I will never stop anything ever again. Ah, <laughs> oh, the dam. Well, there's the dam. <laughs> So the dam is broken and they are kissing all the time now, sneaking around everywhere. I couldn't believe it that Chu Anning is like down to be sneaking around and kissing and stuff. This is crazy. I love it. I'm so happy for him. <laughs> they are literally insatiable and Chu Anning so far has been able to keep his arousal in check because of his cultivation. <laughs> But Moran is, like, dying. He did not study the anti-boner cultivation. He did not. When Chu Anning is in his lap, Moran is so much taller than him that he doesn't even look up at him. Like, they are able to be face to face. Like, actually picture that. Okay. Like, you're much shorter than me. Wait, if you get okay. in my lap. Okay. Okay. Are we okay. doing this? Yeah, we're doing we're this. We're doing this. Okay. Like, uh, like straddle me. Okay. Yeah. I'm, like, quite a few inches taller than you. You. I'm still looking up at you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, Moran is much bigger than Chu Anning. Um, <laughs> science. <laughs> so, during one of these moments, Moran says, Shizen, I can't take it anymore. And Chu Anning says, Me neither. I mean, <laughs> then, not here. <gasps> That's, okay, one of the hottest sentences in the English language. <laughs> not here. <laughs> like, oh my god, girl, we're doing this! Like, not here? That's your only qualm? But then they are interrupted. Of course they are. Oh my god, <laughs> I forgot. Shui Meng is there to cock block them. Yes. Chu Anning and Moran lie to Shui Meng, who has suddenly stumbled upon them in the, I think they were in a forest. Yep. And Shui Meng's like, what are you guys doing here? And Moran says they were hunting an Osmanthus rice cake that cultivated into a spirit. I lost my fucking shit. That he not only said that, but Shui Meng believed it. <laughs> yeah. And only when we got to a later point in the book did I 
come to terms with the fact that an Othmanthus rice cake spirit is not that crazy compared to what actually literally exists in the same volume. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'll, okay, I can see how that sounded slightly more believable, but really? Yeah. And the reason that Shui Meng was in the forest in the first place is because he was looking for a cat named Veggie Bun. <laughs> Meat Bun's evil doppelganger. Yeah, isn't that, a, that's a, gotta be a funny little I love nod. that. But then Chu Anning will say he will go help look for Veggie Bun. And Moran is so upset because he thought they were finally gonna bone, but it got ruined. Damn veggie bun. <laughs> Literally meat bun cock blocking her own characters with veggie bun. I freaking love her. This sexy, guy. Sexy son. Oh, okay. Hanlin the Sage. Or Hua Binan. Bin, bin Bananan. He gives Chu Anning a bunch of the fragrance dew anti nightmare elixir. If you remember, Chu Anning bought a ton of these at that auction. It's not candy, it's gummy vitamins. <laughs> yeah. And Chu Anning says that he doesn't know this guy, but with the elixirs, there was a note and it says, <laughs> essentially it says, wow, you paid way too much money for these at the <laughs> auction and I felt bad, so I wanted to give you more. <laughs> because remember, he spent like a million dollars on them. <laughs> he just had shit else to do with his money. <laughs> yeah. So it introduces this, this sage guy who makes these elixirs. Yeah. Chu Anning likes them because they taste sweet and was having sexy dreams. Chu Anning's also a little sus about this guy. Yeah, I thought that was interesting because he's introduced and we don't really have a reason to think one way or another about him. Mm -hmm. Like he seems he, like he has a fair reputation yeah. and stuff, but for some reason Chu Anning is just like, I don't know, fuck this guy in particular. Yeah. Don't trust him. Shady. I mean, like he is wearing a, like, a face mask. Yeah. Which is, I guess, probably shady behavior. Yeah. <laughs> Why you, Why don't you want me looking at your lips? Oh. <laughs> You're into that? <laughs> I'm not addicted to hot sauce. Hot sauce is addicted to me. Not! <laughs> no! We're crossing out hot sauce. Yes. So we know Moran loves hot sauce, right? Oh, yes. Well, one of the most romantic sentiments ever revolves around this. Moran has quit hot sauce. And he mentions this three times throughout the book. It's not just like a random quip. Even if it was a random quip, it would still be very romantic, but he goes around and he tells Shui Mei this, he tells Shui Meng this, and then he tell, ends up telling Chu Anning this. Moran and Chu Anning go to get hot pot, and Moran thinks this. Isn't this the most beautiful line? I want to be just like you. When we eat hot pot, I want both our chopsticks to dip into the same bubbling pot, no longer one red and one white, sharply divided. That part made me think of you so much. You also choose to not get the spicy broth at Hot Pot so we can share. <laughs> <laughs> so when they're at the Hot Pot restaurant, Chu Anning assumed that Moran would be getting the spicy one and he orders a twin pot, but Moran orders the not spicy bowl. And Chu Anning says, don't you want it spicy? You don't have to. And Moran says, no, I just like to. <laughs> it's so romantic. It's okay. I won't make you be like Moran though. You can always have your spicy foods. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick with the twin pot. It's fine. <laughs> And then that's even followed by a sweeter line where Moran just can't help but laugh. And Chu Anning's like, what's so funny? And Moran says he, he's just really happy. They're killing me. Meat bun and her goddamn food metaphors for love. Yeah. She's so right. Do you know where this is from? The Notebook. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I haven't seen that though. Yeah. Chu Anning and Moran finish dinner and Chu Anning buys a little lantern for him. Every year Moran has always wanted to light a lantern and put it in the river, but he never had the money. And Moran puts it in the water, and it's a really sweet moment between them. Then they get caught in the rain. You know An what that atmospheric means? atmospheric river, oh if my you gosh. will. <laughs> and despite being cultivators with way to deflect the rain, they both are, like, on the same vibe of, like, oh, we can't go back to Shisheng Peak tonight because of the rain. And it's an excuse to, like, be crazy and get an in together. Because Moran says, Shizun, I want to. Sh dot, dot, dot. Uh, not dot. Dot. Yeah, I know what dot 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 means. Yes. And Chu Anning agrees and realizes he is agreeing to do something. Exactly what? He's not sure. He can't even imagine it without getting embarrassed. And so they make out in the rain like crazy. And Chu Anning is dying because he likes it so much, but he isn't willing to make any sounds. So he's just being like completely rigid. He's so embarrassing and so dumb and I love him so much. Yeah. Also like the classic, like 
romance bodice ripper plot line of like oh no we're snowed in i guess we'll have to stay yeah. here tonight like literally at the beginning of the novel it revealed that there is a way to seize rain easily and they're like oh the rain we gotta get an in like they're both uber powerful cultivators a little rain never stopped them from doing anything but it's it's the perfect little excuses that allow chu anning to be the way he is so You've heard of there's only one bed. Now, there's actually too many beds. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so the innkeeper assumes they want two rooms. And Morin is like, no, just one room. <laughs> and Chuaning is like, we need two rooms. <laughs> two rooms. Wink, wink, wink. <laughs> oh, my God. And Chuaning does this whole farce of being like, I am going to bed. You can bring me tea later. And by tea, I mean a bee owner (laughs) (laughs) and he leaves and he goes into his separate room honestly it's like he you're what do you mean this is your first time he's so prepared (laughs) so he's in the room now alone and he can't even look at the bed and he is feeling crazy (laughs) and then moran comes in and he starts trembling shaking yes and moran comes through the door and actually got him tea just to be safe it's like yeah. like i can't just imagine being like like not getting it and he's like did he change his mind yeah okay i guess i'll go get him tea <laughs> then oran goes to light the candle and chuaning asks him not to light it he's too embarrassed and he knows he can't do it with the lights on oh my god oh my god he's so embarrassing he's so so pathetic it's so cute and moran has a moment here where he's like, wow, everyone that wanted to bang Tessian Jun in the past wanted to see my face. They wanted the lights on and how he never wanted to look at anyone's face. Anytime that he did it with Chuaning, though, however, he was obsessed with his face and was studying it the entire time that they were banging. And now he's like, can't even look at his face. <laughs> I love that. I love that part. <laughs> then he calls him Wanning. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> and after thinking about telling him about the past, he finally just gathers him in his arms and kisses him gently. Aww. Every now and then, I will remember that this is literally his shizen and a disciple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know! I'm like, aww, and then I'm like, aww. aww. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is crazy! <laughs> They worked so hard for this. But I'm like, also, like, I'm not... <laughs> Chuaning, when people find out. <laughs> when people find out, I'm like, at some point, they're going to have to deal with this this whole thing. And I'm like, oh my god, this is, this is going to be so embarrassing. Yeah. Okay, Moran's being super gentle with him. And he's, like, going down his body. And he ends up kissing his nipple. And Chuaning throws his head back in humiliated arousal. <laughs> and then is like, please shut the window. <laughs> <laughs> he can't have anything nice he can't he's too fucking embarrassed that's hilarious mm-hmm. we we stand sensitive nipple chuani <laughs> and then moran finally gets him on the bed and gets on top of him and chuaning is shaking oh my god i know just put the pillow over his head and <laughs> let him go gently this is the mortifying ordeal is too much and then Moran says, don't be scared. And Chuaning says, I'm not. And Moran says, good, I've got you. You're doing great. <laughs> Goddamn. Don't even start with a little bit of a praise kink in there. And you know, Chuaning, this is coming from Chuaning, who won't give up the lead during kissing. And finally, this it's- is kind of ebbing away at the, like, let me lead and it will be easier this way. <laughs> It's a lot for him to give up any semblance of control over his fate. Yes. Then, Chu Anning can't help but think of these dreams that he's been having where it's Emperor Moran being really rough and banging him. He's like, oh shit, this is my only frame of reference. I'm gonna be feeling this tomorrow. Yeah. And he even has a moment that's like, Moran doesn't know that I have sexy dreams. He probably thinks I don't know anything about sex. But he does, and he's thinking about it, and he is so aroused that he is dying now. And he is also so in love with Moran. Well, he's being a trembling little maiden. Mm -hmm. But he's, like, having these complex thoughts of, like, I'm not a trembling little maiden. I get fucked in my dreams all the time. (laughs) 
And then he has another vision of Moran banging him while he is sitting on the throne. And even though he knows it's a vision, the feeling of like getting banged is so vivid, he can't not think about it. It's like he knows what that feeling is like of having right. Moran inside him. And that's when he mutters, in me. If I were Moran, I would just actually jump out the window. <laughs> I'm like, like, too fast. Don't ask me what we were going to do, but it wasn't that. <laughs> that's crazy. He's crazy for that. Yeah. He's crazy for that. And here we get a great line. Moran jumped. <laughs> Joanna knows how sex works? <laughs> my thoughts exactly <laughs> that's so funny it's also like <laughs> what, what was he planning was he planning on first walking him through sex ed before like doing this like gently in bed whispering sweet somethings in his ears but he's like reading the manual out loud to him <laughs> drawing di- diagrams <laughs> Shu Enning then says is that what we're supposed to do and Moran fucking says where did you learn that <laughs> who told you that He's like, who corrupted us by pure schism? And Chu Anning couldn't possibly say that he dreamed it, so he says that he accidentally saw a book in the library. Which, honestly, probably could have happened. Yes. Didn't Moran, like, hide porn in his library? Yeah, I think so. Did Does that mean Chu Anning found it? Like, is that, like, a solid alibi? Or is he, like, happening to guess upon the perfect The lie? perfect alibi, yeah. Incredible. Moran is relieved and tells him not to be hasty, and then blows him. <laughs> So much for me not being nasty. <laughs> um, Moran's gaze is described with ardent affection as he looks at Chu Anning's dick. <laughs> I can't not think of Pride and Prejudice with the word ardent. <laughs> Listen, I had a there was like a a quote somewhere in the book where I'm like, this is Pride and Prejudice <laughs> for sure. I actually went looking through Pride and Prejudice. I'm like, I'm sure the exact same line is in here. I didn't find it, but the vibes are there, ardently or otherwise. <laughs> Chu Wenning then says, how could you? Quick, spit it out. <laughs> spit it out, yes. And he's not talking about like, cum. he's talking about his dick. He's like, spit it out. <laughs> spit it out. I wrote that down as one of my favorite out of context lines. Which, but that is, spit it out. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? <laughs> like, like, what are you doing? Chu Wenning also thinks to himself that he loves that his beloved's mouth is around him. I am weak to the word beloved. Like the fuck you mean he's your beloved? That's so sappy. The fuck you mean he's ardently blowing your dick? Like, what? <laughs> like, how? This is so sappy. Moran then calls him babe. That is crazy. I know. I thought that was hot. And this is really just such a sweet scene. Moran is praising him so much, and Chu Anning is so embarrassed, but he's also really, really enjoying it. It doesn't last long, and Chu Anning is so happy, he wants to kiss him and thank him so much, but he has no energy left. Like, it was a really good blowjob. And he had, he, he was he's so, tuckered out he now. He had a great time at his first blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> and then Moran says, I love you. And we get his thoughts. I really, really love you so much. With reckless ambition, with boundless contrition, hearing the weight of my guilt and sins, yet unwilling to give up. Selfishly, desperately, ardently, hungrily, I love you. That was the Pride and Prejudice quote. Once we get him, we get ardent. Straight up, I thought that was out of Pride and Prejudice. Isn't oh that beautiful? Gosh. That is such a good quote. Who would have thought that Randwan would give us quite possibly one of the most loving and explicit sex scenes in Don May currently published? Meatbun has a and gift. Yeah. And sometimes she even uses it. <laughs> <laughs> what other look, what other pairings can you think of that like canonly have that kind of like sappy language attached to their like first time? Yeah, it's true. When the dick too big, it put you in the hospital. Did you make this? No, I found it. You just okay. Then Chu Anning is like, what about you? And Moran is busy kissing his eyelids and is like, Don't worry about me, that doesn't matter. Service top Moran? <laughs> So many people, I think, have not read Arha because of the scenes in the beginning and how non-consensual it is. And I a thousand percent get that. I was also put off by those scenes in the beginning. And I was just so relieved to see how consensual and beautifully, like, they are both enjoying their first time together. Like, the bar is so low for Dan May. And this was just beautifully them enjoying it like mm-hmm. so so much 
Mm -hmm. It was not toxic. (sighs) Incredible. (laughs) We've we've done it, lads. We've made it. So, Chuaning now. He's already come. And so he's being Chuaning again. Oh, yes. And it's like, well, if you don't want it, then never mind. (laughs) Oh, my God. I love him. I love him so much. Oh, my God. He's so... <sighs> and then Moran is like, how could I not want it? Don't be dumb. <laughs> Moran being Moran. And then Chuanning says, call me dumb again and I'll cut your head off. <laughs> like, that also made my favorite quote list. <laughs> like, who says that? Post not threatening. <laughs> like, and Moran's just, he's concerned about taking it slow and wanting Chuanning to enjoy everything. But then Moran grabs Chuanning's hand and puts it on himself. And Chuanning thinks, making love with a man like this would be life threatening. <laughs> You're damn right, girl. <laughs> Chuanning is then like, I'm gonna try and put it in my mouth. No. And Moran no. is like, stop, because I will not be able to stop myself. And Chuanning is like, stop yourself from what? <laughs> And then Moran shows him. He flips Chuanning over. <gasps> Stop, I remember this. And this was formative. This was, I was not expecting this. He does it like between Chuanning's thighs. I truly did not even consider that that would be a solution. Because it, that's that how- is very underrepresented. It is, it is. And so Moran is able to like, with reckless abandon, go at it like mm-hmm. hard, but he's not hurting Chuanning mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. And Chuanning is like, oh my god! <laughs> so, while this is happening, Chuanning is moaning. Good for him. Right? And then he starts having more visions of Emperor Moran calling him a slut and saying really filthy things. Stop! Yeah. Ugh. And Moran comes, and it is so obscene because he, like, angles it up a little bit of like this is where i want to do it kind of thing and chuanning for a second is like you're not putting it in he's like no no (laughs) this is just kind of (laughs) hot um and then he makes chuanning come again and chuanning says don't say come (laughs) oh i kind of wish you were calling me a dirty little slut right now but don't say come (laughs) like which is it wanting (laughs) yeah the dichotomy i know and everything is just so so sweet and they just love they love each other and they fall asleep it's it's beautiful it's so beautiful i can't believe they they the science scienced and they found a way moron he he planned it all out and it worked and chuani lives to tell the tale truly so then in the morning chuani kisses moran's cheek which is so cute so like the so like the first time he like initiates a little bit of affection that way yeah yeah and then he realizes that moran has the same necklace that he gave him oh my god and it's so sweet to see them realizing the things that they've done for each other in the past that were full of so much love and if chuanning maybe saw that before there was the confession he might have some strange thoughts about it but now he just knows it was because he liked him oh reverse foreshadowing yeah <laughs> rear shadowing hindsight ah, also this line when moran kissed him he was so passionate as if he'd handed control of his every breath to chuanning along with everything else it's just peak i am gobsmacked yeah by the sheer passion behind the intensity of their feelings for each other yeah it's just so delectable to read mm-hmm. then dun 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 oh no so this part chuanning ends up having to go into seclusion and i was like oh my god what and it's not treated as a big deal like whatsoever it was a big deal to me i'm yeah. like you can't just you cannot separate them like shui Meng's dad is just like what it's something that happens to him like every couple of years <gasps> his <whatever>. moon sickness <laughs> he's yeah. on his period so it's just a part of his cultivation the disciples take turns taking care of him they've done it before when moran goes to check in on chuanning he catches she may like coming from his shift holding something glinting in his hand and moran's first thought is like oh my god he's gonna kill shizen like he thinks it's a knife what a wild like i believe that i'm also dumb like moron but like what a wild assumption to have about you know someone that you trust and and cared for and generally would assume wouldn't be out murdering people you know yeah and turns out it was a comb <laughs> And Shimei is like, are you suspecting me of something right now? 
because he kind of jumps out, right? And Moran's like, no. And then she is kind of like, were you thinking I was going to fucking kill Shizun? Like, what the hell? And this is where, like, a rift between Moran and Shime begins to That's happen. so sad. I mean, if you thought I was going to kill someone, there would be a bit of a rift uh, between us, I believe. I w- if I thought I was catching you in the act of killing someone, I wouldn't distract your focus. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you really enjoyed finding the images for these. I really did. There's a lot of dogs in this, sli- in this slideshow. <laughs> it's a dog book. Moran's relationship with Shimei is not so good, but Moran's relationship with Shui Meng is getting better and better. This is a topsy-turvy world we're living in. Really? So Shui Meng and Moran end up drinking together, and Moran is testing if Shui Meng is good enough to walk himself back alone. And he's like, how many fingers am I holding up? Who's this? Who is that? And then he points at himself and says, who am I? Expecting him to say a dog, because Shui Meng always calls him a dog, right? And Shui Meng says, guh. (laughs) Like, Like, my brother. That's so cute. That's so cute, right? And he touches the sword, his own sword, with a special crystal that Moran got him, risking his life for it. And Shui Meng never thanked him for it. And when he found out that it was Moran who saved him from Shu Sheng Lin and that whole attack, he felt even more guilty. And he had actually cried in bed that night after being saved. And everyone thought it was just Shui Meng crying for his shizen, which I suppose he does. <laughs> But he was actually crying about Moran and had said to himself, Gah, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. That just hits in such a special spot. Like, a, like all aside from all the romance stuff, just the relationship between them as brothers mm-hmm. growing. And like, actually, Shui Meng of all people being able to feel that way and accept him as a brother yeah. it's you know it's got a little bit of a like jung chung wei wushen going on with yeah. it uh, like very different circumstances but yeah. I, it's so cute i love him for that now oh yes yeah. so i was like what uh the the gourd of debauchery i'm assuming yes <laughs> making the the rice cake spirit seem a little more reasonable absolutely this is another insane moment there is literally a giant gourd that like stumbles in the town and the only way to defeat it is to beat it in a drinking contest like why is this happening <laughs> Yeah, meat pie. <laughs> so everyone knows that Chu Anning is the best heavyweight around. Which also kills me. I'm like, out of all of his sensitivities and delicate sensibilities and flaws, you didn't make him a lightweight? Yeah. Like, if I were to guess, if I were to bet money or even my life on one character not being able to consume alcohol without mm-hmm. terrible consequences, it would be Chu Anning. Yeah. Like, he can't handle spicy foods. He can't fucking handle looking into sunlight. I don't know. Like, you, like, could, you could imagine him having like a La Wanji level tolerance. Yes. But yeah. No, literally. But... There are previous scenes where we see him drinking and he just kind of gets like normal guy drunk after drinking a ton of wine and stuff. It, it baffles me though. Yeah. Like Chu Wanning is He's out there doing st- keg stands. He's totally fine. <laughs> He's Chu Wanning is your strongest soldier. Chu Wanning's playing beer pong with the gourd of debauchery. <laughs> stone cold sober. Chu Anning literally gets into a drinking battle with the gourd. And then, this is kind of happening in the background, Shime confronts Moran and says, You've been pushing me away since Shizun came back to life. He's like, shh, Shizun's drinking (laughs) against the (laughs) gourd right now. I need to focus. And Moran says, like, yeah, Shimei is nice to him, but Shizun gave me his life. So he's, like, trying to not say, I'm not in love with you anymore, but it was always this love for Chu Wanning. He's, like, kind of hiding it with the, well, obviously, I like Shizun more. Look at what he did for me kind of thing. And Shimei asks what Moran was going to tell him once long ago when he was going to admit to him. Remember he had that whole thing planned out? He's like, I'm gonna tell you, gotta talk to you, and then that never happened. But Moran does not tell him. And then another gourd of debauchery arrives. Oh my god. It's better than one gourd of debauchery? (laughs) Two gourds of debauchery. But this one is the gourd of lust. I know who can fight the gourd of lust. It only obeys the order of the purest people. Never mind. (laughs) So then everyone is like, get Shui Meng in here. He's a fucking virgin. (laughs) That fucking killed me. Yeah. I was like, oh, Chuanin's like supposed to be pure. It's like, no. Who's purer than Chuanin? Shui Meng. Fucking virgin. Yeah. So Shui Meng goes inside the gourd and he comes out in wedding robes. So 
the this is this is a quote kind of talking about how the gourd seems to work mm -hmm. the lust gourd isn't actually lustful it's a hopeless romantic it wants to marry the person with the cleanest of most adoring heart in the world someone who has no one else in their heart apparently those sucked into the gourd find themselves in a wedding chamber then it transforms into the image of a veiled person if there is someone they love they will see the person's face but if they are lustful they will see a naked man or woman only the pure-hearted will see the true spirit of the gourd mm -hmm. so shui Meng screams you turned into me to seduce me and it worked <laughs> So Shui Meng saw the person that he loves the most, which was himself, <laughs> in the gourd. I kind of love that he popped out in the wedding robes, so though. What an image. Yeah, so he's so narcissistic, he literally saw himself in the gourd. Good for him. So then they're like, okay, okay, send Chu Enning. He's a, the other virgin we know. <laughs> Chu Enning goes inside, narrowly avoiding any questions about never being in love. And inside, he sees... Tashian Jun Moran. What the absolute fuck? Yeah. That took me out. I know. That was like scary. Because you're like, okay, he's going to see his one true love. It's Moran. Then he'll get to see the spirit in the, of the gourd and it's good. He sees Tashian Jun. Like, what does that mean? What does that mean? With the beaded crown and everything. And Moran grabs him and pushes him onto the bed and says, you still can't forget me. That's crazy. Right? And he sucks on his ear and he calls him baby and Chu Enning gasps and pulls out his whip and then hits him and then the gourd shows its true face and he defeats the gourd. What on earth happens in a pumpkin's life for it to cultivate into this kind of spirit? <laughs> yeah. And when he comes out, he too is in wedding garb. That's so fucking embarrassing. And then everyone is wondering who he married inside the gourd because that means he's was in love with someone and then later moran is like so was i the bride in there and chuening's like i can't tell him that it was actually the evil moran who fucks me in my dreams in there <laughs> so there's something fucky going on like with the timelines for that to be his true love that it's like original moran this is my thought i'm not gonna read the comments i do not want to be spoiled but i feel like since chuening has these weird dreams that seem to be from the past because they align with moran's memories of the past this moran and this chuaning existed in the past together and tashian jun exists in the past but he's also existing through the present timeline through chuaning's dreams and through situations like the gourd yeah the idea of him is something that chuaning can experience which doesn't make sense unless some part of his soul because i know his soul is a little fucky yeah or his body physically had some sort of connection to him. So something's out of alignment yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Somehow. Timey wimey. But we only got 15 minutes to jerk Moran off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, after all that, Chu Enning and Moran are alone again, which means they are horny. <laughs> but they only have 15 minutes before Chu Enning has this big meeting. And Chu Enning is like, let's do it. I can help you. And I'm like, girl, Chu Enning, <laughs> taking charge. And he's like, I want to do it so bad. But Moran says, I can't come that quickly. Oh my god. I was not expecting that. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? I like, know, Chuan right? can't just like, look at you and you'll come? Like, yeah. really? But I think it's because He's Moran's, so masculine. Moran's love for him is so deep that like it needs to be a whole thing. It can't just be like a little quick quickie. It needs. He's like, I need to go full beast mode. Okay, now. Oh, okay. Here's some plot stuff, some side character stuff. Yu, Wang Shi, and Nan Gong Tzu. I ship them. Same. They have a moment here. Basically, they arrive to Chuaning and Moran, their group, all bloody to give the message that there are these insects coming out of the ruins of Rufeng sect, which was the place that burned down in the previous volume. And then everyone is wondering what Xu Shenglin is planning to do. Chuaning thinks he's planning to use the rebirth technique. And this is also where it's revealed that the crazy fucking tangerine guy from the first novel was Xu Shenglin. Because he said a phrase, there was once a man from Lin Yi who lost his heart at 20, saying that he resembled the girl he was talking to. He was talking about Luo Feng Hua, which was the guy he opened up the rift to take the soul out of. And everyone was like, why would he want Luo Feng Hua? Didn't he plot against him? And Chu Wanning is like, human hearts are unfathomable, but I can't think of another reason for him to want to use rebirth. 
So Chu Anning's kind of insinuating that he was like in love with him or like obsessed with Lo Feng Hua, even though he hated him so much. It's kind of giving you city arc. It's also kind of giving like a perfect foil to Moran and Chu Anning. Yeah. <laughs> but, more importantly. But, but yeah, <laughs> like definitely like, oh, I hate him so much, but like, okay, you went into like the infinite hells to grab his soul. It's kind of gay. <laughs> and Chu Anning picks up on that. He's like, hearts? That's- kind of gay he's like hearts are gay sometimes <laughs> hearts are gay sometimes and it makes you do crazy shit sometimes <laughs> and then they also say even more um suspiciously that yo Wangxi, who was shu shanglin's adopted daughter is very similar to lo feng hua and they insinuate that shu shanglin may have subconsciously raised yo Wangxi to be like lo feng hua it's like you literally raised your own daughter to be like the guy you hate so much because you're you're so obsessed with him. Yeah, that's pretty gay. Yeah. And he also named her Wang Shi, which means to forget the past. So like, it's messy. <laughs> like his relationship is messy, messy. Oh my God. And uh, Moran has a moment here where he's like, this is sounding a little familiar about how he like, mm-hmm. is his misplaced hatred and obsession with like yeah. Chu Anning. Then bath time. <laughs> Moran and Chu Anning go to the public, public, baths together. What could possibly happen in the public baths? Moran is flirting with him a lot and touching him, and Chuaning says he'd rather be bitten by a dog. Oh no. And then Moran says, rough. <laughs> I wanted to kill him in that moment. And Chuaning's like, why did you do that? <laughs> He's like, you said you'd rather be bitten by a dog. I thought that was a pretty good impression. I actually had a little dog as a kid, and it sounded just like that. And oh my god. Chu Anning is acting all like he doesn't want to, but he really, really wants it. And Moran ends up like thigh fucking him in the bath. And then he blows his mind by doing the thing with like their dicks together. <laughs> <laughs> Chu Anning's like, I never thought of this. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. There's a line where he's like blown away by it. <laughs> the technology here. <laughs> It's astounding. And then uh, Chu Anning moans Moran. And Moran says he'd never dreamt such a thing possible. And Chu Anning is so loud when he finishes. Moran says, next time, if you're ready, we'll do it for real. Like, like oh, you were really into that. Yeah, yeah. However, Chu Anning had been so loud that the next day students are chatting about how they thought they heard a fox spirit is in the baths because they heard it moaning and they're like we should go and try and catch it it's the situation that is end capped by the most utterly ridiculous thing it's like you got you start with the 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 rough the the dog barking (laughs) and you end with students gossiping about the fox spirit yeah and in the middle you have chuani experiencing a moment of joy yeah (laughs) (laughs) but it's just sandwiched by the most embarrassing things possible (laughs) can you decipher this image baby girl cock yes i'm still in the bath moran says next time shizen should i make you come on my and Chu Anning stalks off. That was like too much for him to handle. Too much for me too. Yes. <laughs> I loved it. And then Moran is like, oh man, did I say the wrong thing? Damn, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, Chu Anning just finds talking about it too embarrassing and was thinking it would be far better for to just go ahead and do it. <laughs> I love him for that. He's like, just don't say it. Don't say it. Don't make it embarrassing. Just yeah. do it. Yeah, he's like, that's less embarrassing. Exactly. And Moran is still ruminating on this, however. He says, should I have said baby girl next time? Should I make you come on my car? It's like, oh, what part, what, what was your thought process to think that that's what made the sentence better and yeah. less embarrassing? Adding baby girl would have fixed this, right? Right. I just want to shake him to hear his two brain cells rattling around in the skull to confirm that there's two instead of just one. <laughs> Oh my god. Also, baby girl just sent me into orbit. I know. It was great. It it. was so funny. Okay, the ship is sailing for Nan Gongsu and Yeo Wangxi because Nan Gongsu gives Yeo Wangxi a jade pendant Mm. and says that he wants to get her an even nicer one once this is all over. I love that. Also, it's kind of giving a little bit like, I don't know, like you're, you're doomed a fiance going off to war you yeah. know like when i come back when this is all over yeah i'll get you a white picket fence home and yeah that's, i don't know i hope they're okay and nan Yonso says that he won't need to dual cultivate to get rid of his illness anymore so yo Wangxi takes that as like oh okay you can be with whoever you want now so you don't need to be with me because i was like 
dutifully to you. Okay, bye. But actually, Nangangso was just like freeing her in a way. So they're not bound by any weird political shit. Mm-hmm. And he asks her to call him Asa, which is what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that works good in English, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so sweet, though. <laughs> I've never said it out loud before. <laughs> Which is what she used to call him when they were kids. That's sweet. And so it's kind of like they can start anew and, yeah. like, have a friendship relationship without all of the... Mm-hmm. I love that. Control. I really love the scenes between them. Yeah. And he's also being really embarrassing and, like, sweet throughout it. Then, look at, look at these pictures, okay? Look at that. Shared heart array. How it's, lovely. Isn't it so nice? So nice. Something weird happened with bugs on this mountain, mm-hmm. right? So they think Xu Shanglin is hiding out on Mount Huang. So there is this insane drama with this guy that is pretending to help open the array to mm-hmm. the mountain, but it's actually harming this other guy. And there's a bunch of cultivators that want Nan Gong Tzu to pay for the crimes of what happened with Rufeng sect. And it's really not fair, but Nan Gong Tzu is being really like noble about it. And is like, I will go down with this ship, all honorable. And it's very dramatic. And there's just this really, really long fight scene mm-hmm. where everyone's arguing. And Moran and Chuaning and Shui Meng end up just going up the mountain. <laughs> but first, Chuaning, when he like touches the array, he is like the array master. He's oh, always yeah. fixing them and stuff. And that's when he realizes that the two guys that were like supposed to be heading the array together, like the one was not holding up his side of the deal. And so it was like fully harming the other guy. And Chu Henning goes up to him and it's like, fuck you. Like, Chu, and everyone's like, how could you yell at him? He's doing such a kind thing for you. Like opening the array. And Chu Henning's like, he's like doing shit. Like Chu Henning loses it on this guy. Mm-hmm. And the guy is lying and he like bites his own tongue to be bleeding. And it's like, no, look, the array's hurting me. And Chu Henning's like, I'm the array guy. <laughs> like you try to fucking lie to me. And he's mad. Mm-hmm. And that was hot to see Chu Henning like yes. uphold justice for a while. I thought so too yeah and of course people aren't buying it though when chuanin just looks like he's being an asshole mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh yeah that's also when chuanin is like oh yeah nangang su is my disciple because everyone's ganging up on nangang su like and he has no one to back him right and but chuanin's like actually when he was a little kid i actually ran into him and his mom and his mom asked me to take him as a disciple and i said yes which d- we as we know does not sound like chuanin at all probably didn't happen but he's like, nope, he's under my protection, so you have to go through me first if you want to yes. fuck with them. And then Shui Meng is like, I have another disciple brother! Oh, I don't want one! I don't want to compete for attention with another person! <laughs> so everyone's a little bit upset. Like, all the disciples are like, oh, no! Yeah. So Divided it, our shizen it, it, into, like, more sections. But also, um, Nangang Se is like, no, nope, that didn't happen. Nope, I'm he's not like, I never disciple. nodded to you three times. Like, I never did a, any sort of formal right. ritual. Like, he's trying to spare Chu Anning the disgrace of being associated or tied to him. And Chu Anning is just there trying to protect all of these little babies, honestly. <laughs> true. He's, like, trying to corral them, all the little <laughs> ducks under his yes. wing. So, they go up the mountain. Mm-hmm. And they are being attacked by ash zombies. And it's really disgusting. It's so gross. It's nasty. But they are just, like, commoners. They're not cultivators, which is weird because Mm -hmm. a zombie tries to kill Moran, and Moran's like, wow, that zombie sucked. (laughs) It didn't try to reach for my core. It just Mm -hmm. tried to, like, hit me. So they're just commoners, and they're like, where did all these, like, commoner dead bodies come from? And it's from Rufung's sect. So some timey-wimey shit happened where all the dead people from that zone got put onto the mountain because Xu Shanglin is able to control time and space which is scary whenever time and space is involved. (laughs) And then Moran crushes one of the zombies up, which is so gross. And he finds that there is the bug. And it's like the bug infestation that Yuang Shi and Nengonso were talking about. So gross. And then Moran gets all scared because he immediately knows what's going on. And this part of the book is freaky. There is a technique that he created with the chess pieces and the bugs called the shared heart array not as good as i thought it was no we get this flashback now where moran is in the previous timeline before he became tashian jun like he's still a disciple and he was just learning how to do the chess formation and the thing is to make these chess pieces it takes a lot of energy and he developed a technique that requires less energy and involves these bugs take a look into the past cry because chuani is so sweet and moran never realized it once again hours okay 
Oh, goody. Moran goes into the Landsect Forbidden Library, skims past the evil book of evil songs, <laughs> and there's like a thing on like the chest formation, right? So he starts trying to do it and he is successful, but it takes so much energy, it makes him like fucking loopy. And this is like his first time doing it and he fucking passes out. He wakes up in bed and he sees hazily there's someone that looks like she may at his side but this is after she may died in the original timeline and so he's like crying and he has a fever and he's delirious and he's imagining like she may is there with him and then he feels she may like take his hand and to the audience now we know this was chu anning mm -hmm. chu anning was there and he touches his face and he holds his hand and he sits with him and he also describes the face of being full of so much concern so it's like Chu Anning like loved him and cared about him and was so concerned for him. Mm -hmm. And Moran was like, this is just dream she may, <laughs> you know? No one else could care for me clearly. And yeah, just it's another scene of showing how much care Chu Anning had for him and Moran never saw it. But then this part reminded me of Case File. Never a, a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So same author. Um, <laughs> Moran, as he is developing these chess pieces, which if you put a chess piece in someone, you can control them. He gets this idea. He's like, I could put a chess piece in Chu Anning and then he could do whatever I want him to do. He would kneel on command and fall to his knees and apologize and cower at my feet and he call me master. And I could wound him and tear him to pieces and inflict the utmost humiliation and defeat file him okay well we're getting into defile territory it's a little bit different than straightforward revenge yeah so this reminded me of like how you and oh, case yeah. file he's like obsessed with humiliating she ching mm -hmm. chung and wants to like fuck him in a wedding outfit and stuff <laughs> just because it would be so humiliating you oh know? yeah so humiliating nothing yeah. else and, like not really realizing you're obsessed with uh your teacher in a gay way kind of thing now we get to a horrifyingly sad scene this I could throw up over how sad this is, okay? So Moran is making these chess pieces that control people and he needs to test them out. So he puts them in these two little disciples and it works. And he's like, holy fuck, I have a real knack for this. <laughs> On my first attempt, I have these two people fully under my control. Mm -hmm. So he's testing it out with these two disciples like down by the river at night. And suddenly Chu Wanning appears and sees him with these two disciples. And this scene is scarily suspenseful because Moran is like, holy fuck, if I get caught here, Chu Anning will eviscerate me. Like I am literally practicing evil. My soul is tarnished. I can't believe this. And also Moran is aware he's already gotten away with it once before with a close call because when he was passed out, he had those chess pieces in his bag and Chu Anning didn't look in his bag. And it was described as Chu Anning is not the type of person to ever peer inside someone's bag, even if it's wide open. So he's already had a close call because he passed out with the evidence right there. And now Chu Anning has walked in on him literally as he's like controlling people. Mm -hmm. So he is trying to like get these guys to go back to normal secretly doing like little hand signs behind his back and it works. And the disciples are like, oh, hey, Chizen, and they leave. And then Moran is just there like, holy fuck, oh my God. And he knows that if Chu Anning uses his truth whip on him, like it's all over. Chu Anning says, someone snuck into the Forbidden Library. Wonder how, who that could be. <laughs> and Moran is being a dick and is like, what's that got to do with me? And Chu Anning says, how long are you going to keep this up? Is he caught? And Chu Anning says, don't you know how dangerous it is to be out right now? He's just worried about him. He never assumed that it was Moran that did it. Like, of course Chu Anning didn't suspect him. I and mean, he was just worried that there could be someone out there harming him. And then Moran says some of the worst things imaginable. <sighs> He's like, wow, you finally come to care about people. Where was that during the heavenly rift when you let Shimei die? <laughs> He's such an asshole! Oh my god! And Chu Anning says, it's time to pull yourself together. Shi Ming Jing didn't die for you to become a lunatic. <laughs> and Moran's like, lunatic, I'll show you a lunatic. <laughs> and Moran says, he didn't die for me, he died for you. Oof. And then, oh god, and then. Moran says, my room is right across from his. I'll never be able to see his light on again. I'll never be able to ask him for another bowl of wontons. Chowin's like, I can't even go there right now. 
Shizen, the Sichuanese make the best wontons. Chili oil, dried chilies, and peppercorn. You need all three, but you hate all these things. Back then, you wanted to make me another bowl. You meant well, but I know how to describe anything you make even without tasting it. I happened to hear Shuemeng use this phrase a few days ago. It seemed so fitting for Shizen's wontons. And then Chuaning fumbles through his vocabulary to try and guess what Moran is going to say. Because if he did in advance, it would deaden the sting of humiliation. That hurt me so much. So he's trying to think of all the worst things imaginable Moran could say. Because if he can think it, then it won't hurt as bad. So could it be not worth a damn? Like, he couldn't think of anything more cutting than that. Like, if Moran thought that his effort of making wontons was not worth a damn. And we know that Chuaning was the one who actually made the wontons all along. Then... Moran says, a piss poor copycat. Which is worse. Which is so much worse because Chuaning was the original maker. And That's Moran will never know this. Except he does know now, thank God. And so he's just like, ah, oh, that was that was worse. That, that was, was definitely that worse. Was definitely worse. Okay. Chuaning's thoughts are he had followed the instructions exactly. The pages of Sejuan recipes spread out before him, kneading the dough, adjusting the seasonings, mixing the filling, his face smudged with flour. He'd kept folding until his awkward misshapen wontons became adorably plump. He had practiced diligently, refining this technique, only to be called a piss-poor copycat. Without a word, Chu Anning spun on his heel and strode away. And then it says, Moran couldn't say why, but he'd always thought Chu Anning's footsteps had been hurried as he left that day. They weren't as sure and steady as usual, almost as though he were fleeing a grievous defeat. Nor did he understand why he was gripped by a vague sense of unease as he watched, frowning as Chu Anning walked away. In the instant his figure was about to vanish, Moran cried, Wait! But Chu Anning didn't stop or turn his head. He couldn't. Despite gritting his teeth against the pain, tears streamed down his face. You made Chuaning cry. You made you him made run away Shizen and cry. Run away crying because you called his wontons a piss poor copycat. And just think about how much Chuaning pushes down every day, how much shit he takes. He is so good at deflecting, but he fully couldn't handle that and he cried. Mm -hmm. Like, not even like go back home and cry about it. Like, he instantly cried. Like, and, and this man has been through so much without so much as a single tear. And then there's a line here that I think sums them up really well. And it says, Moran had never understood his shizen. And likewise, his shizen had gravely misread him. Not understanding someone and misreading someone are very close to being the same thing, but they are different. And mm -hmm. that does make sense with both of their perspectives on each other. Yeah. Also, one other thing to note there too is that Chuaning's whip was like glowing in that scene. So Moran, I think, had the sense that like Chuaning was gonna use it on him, but it was actually just glowing because Chuaning had like used it a little bit early. Like he had no mm. thoughts. Oh, okay. So that kind of also leads into the like um, misunderstanding. Right. Is yeah. That Moran was like, oh, you're gonna, you're threatening me with your whip when Chuaning literally just like stumbled upon Moran and was like, what are you doing after he had just used his whip? So it's yeah. just like misunderstandings up your shelf misunderstand you yeah so we're still in the flashback murderous, murderous maths. maths easy questions evil answers yes <sighs> so back to business moran fully lets the darkness consume him he starts That's how i feel during math of the class too <laughs> <laughs> yeah he starts planting chess pieces in everyone and he's thinking about how long it will take for him to make enough chess pieces to like fully take over the peak and this is where shui Mun comes in this is like a genuinely horrifying scenario like it has to do with a villain's plan to like take over the world but the setup is so funny honestly the plot twist of Shui Meng being able to do math is something I never could have guessed. Right? And, and I'm still so surprised. So Moran, like, asks Shui Meng if he saved 10 candies a day, how many candies would I have in a year? Shui Meng immediately is like, da doi, 3,650. Like, I'm really good at math. I help my mom count prescription pills all the time. And Moran's like, interesting. Hmm. Well, if I could make 12 a day and I wanted 5,000 candies, what would that be? And Shui Meng whips out the abacus and is like, well, let's see. <laughs> and uh, the answer is actually not included in the book. What? For if he could make 12 chess pieces a day and he wanted 5,000, how many days would it take? Wait, did you did you find the answer? Well, yes, it's, 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 it's a very simple equation. But okay, well, I was it was going to take me a moment. I was going to work on it. for <laughs> It's 4, 416 days, so a little bit over a year. I did it on my own abacus. Oh, sure. 
Of course. So then Moran is starting to come up with ways to do this faster, right? And it takes a long time and a lot of spiritual energy to make a perfect chess piece where you can control like a fully grown person. Mm -hmm. But he can make kind of janky, like shitty chess pieces really easily. And so now he starts testing out this shared heart technique. Moran's fucking around with corpses and bugs and chess pieces here. These two bugs, they have this special connection to each other. He puts one in a corpse's mouth and then he puts the other bug in disciples and the bugs have their babies and end up resonating together. And this way he's able to control way more people. And this is the technique that he sees Chu Shang Lin is using. Cut. Which is gonna be really hard to explain without being like, I have an interesting amount of knowledge in something that I should know nothing about. Exactly, yeah. So, look at this. Ooh. I'll have you know, I did use a picture of the Muppets originally, but then I thought that would scare you, so it I changed it. It would be very upsetting. Thank you. Back to the present timeline. Moran then tells everyone what he thinks is going on, and he explains it working like he was too short as a kid to watch the front of puppet shows, so he'd often go and watch from the behind. We're currently on the mountain, which is like a puppet show. The mountain is actually the behind the scenes of the puppet show. The actual show is elsewhere with more powerful things being controlled. Mm. And everyone immediately is like, this is incredibly suspicious. Why would you think of this? <laughs> How do you know this? Mm -hmm. How did you even know that bug was in there? Like, what the fuck? And Chu Wanning protects him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Moran's point of view is his own. He is my disciple. I hope you will be prudent with your words and refrain from unnecessary conjecture. Get my disciple's name out of your fucking mouth. Exactly. So everyone ends up understanding that the reason Xu Shenglin killed so many commoners was to control more powerful people elsewhere. Exactly like what Moran tested out by putting something in a zombie and being able to control actual live humans. Okay. Right? Then they find Song Chitong's dead body. Oh, yeah. What? The, she disappeared, I guess. Yeah. And they realized that they needed her to like unlock the mountain. Like you need right. someone from that history to get up there. Mm -hmm. And... Then they're like, oh, can we like access her spirit and ask it some questions? But it's like, fucked. They ask, was Xu Shenglin the one that brought you to this mountain? And she shakes her head, no. Oh. But then she can't speak anymore because there was a snake swallowing spell on her. Like if she tells the truth, it like destroys you. So they were able to talk to her spirit for a moment and get that much of information. It wasn't Xu Shang Lin. So it's like, who, who the, the fuck, fuck brought her up the mountain? Yeah. What? So then they realize, or they assume that the actual puppet show with the more powerful puppets um, is going to be with the Rufun Sex Grave of Heroes, which would be like uber powerful corpses. And basically if he lost control for even a second, it would be worse calamity than the infinite hells opening up because some of these heroes were people that had extreme cultivation and some even like cultivated immortality and shit well, i mean so, they can't be that immortal if they're dead that's what i thought yeah <laughs> but yeah it's like you utilize these little zombies to mm. actually control these like crazy powerful people over here yeah. you know who this is jack ma <laughs> this is the funniest fucking part of the book for me <laughs> so they need three thousand people to get to the next mountain where they think all the shit is going down. Like literally it's a, one of the mountain rules, I think, is like you need 3000 people to cross. Well, how are they gonna transport that many people? Well, this is where Jack Ma becomes a real character in our hut. <laughs> if you don't know, Jack Ma is kind of like China's Jeff Bezos for Amazon, but for Alibaba. And in Arha, he manufactures vehicles and beasts for deliveries and every sort of parcel or shipment passes through his outposts and he has a lot going on and therefore he, dealt with so many different areas. People call him a jack of all trades, therefore Jack Ma. <laughs> oh, Meat like, Bun. Meat Bun like forced this joke in here. It's She's so, so funny. funny for that. Am I evil? Could be. So this part's kind of scary too. After the mountain part and before they depart for the next mountain, Moran is staying back at an inn and he didn't realize that in his palm, he had created a chess piece without even thinking about it isn't that horrifying that's horrifying like completely not thinking about it it was such an old habit when he was stressed was to just make them and he starts having these bad thoughts like is evil in my soul can i ever escape it and he starts getting freaked out and gets a little bit confused on the timelines and is like i love that yeah it's so scary it's and like, angsty but it, 
it feels very reasonable for him to be scared and not kind of forget exactly who and where he is. Yeah. And he's like just kind of having like a terrible time mm-hmm. in his inn alone. And then Shui Meng knocks on his door and him and Shimei come in and they tend to some small wounds that he had gotten on the mountain. And Shimei presses slender fingers to the pulse at Moran's wrist and worry flits across his face, but it was gone in a flash. And Moran is like, what's going on? And Shimei's like, oh, it's nothing. And that's not explained. What? So she may like sensed something on Moran. Your meridians are fucked. Your meridians are hella evil, bro. <laughs> and she may leaves and Shui Meng says that she may has been acting weird and spacing out a lot recently. What's happening? I d- I'm like, is she may the controlling shit like in another dimension? Like, is that why he's spacing out? Like <laughs> spacing out because you're actually an evil puppet master and yeah. you're multitasking. Like too maybe. Close to the I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So much weird stuff has happened with Shimei, but at the same time, I'm like, is this some sort of like red herring diversion? I don't know. Yeah. I I cannot even look at the comments because I feel like no. someone's gonna spoil it for I me. Know. But then Shui Meng is like, do you think he likes someone? <laughs> like <laughs> I'm here literally like wondering if he is like the evil big bad, and <laughs> Shui Meng's like, it's probably because he likes someone, right? <laughs> but would you know, you fucking virgin. <laughs> And then Shui Meng also notices that Moran has a similar necklace to Chu Anning. Oh my god. And he also knows that Chu Anning was going to make Moran a handkerchief, and he starts getting a little jealous. I like how he kind of starts getting the ick. He's like, the vibe here, I don't know what it is, but it's not straight and I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Shui Meng leaves and Moran has like real darkness hours again, mm-hmm. and he just sits in the corner and is filled with so much anxiety. Until he finally goes to Chu Anning's room. He's like, wait a second. I can go back to Chu Anning and feel better. Except he's like, there's something I need to tell you. <gasps> oh no. And it's like, is he going to freaking tell him about the past? This is one of my favorite memes. <laughs> what? Have you seen this video? No. Shoot me. So Moran starts shaking and crying. No. And Chu Anning hugs him. And Chu Anning says, if you don't want to say it, then don't. Everyone has their secrets. Everyone makes mistakes. If it's too painful to say, you don't have to tell me and I won't ask further. I know you won't do anything like it again. That's so good. I really like that, especially because I think it's like it's such like a common trope to hear a character say, like, you can tell me anything. I'll love you no matter what. It's okay. You can trust me. You can tell me. Like, that's just something we hear, like, in every movie ever, mm-hmm. right? That's not always true. Yeah. Or it's not, it doesn't always feel safe. She was right. like, don't tell me. Like, it's in the past. Just don't tell me. Right? It'll be okay. If it bothers you that much, it's okay to leave it behind you. Like, yeah. I think, and that's exactly what he needed to hear in that moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think he could have handled telling Chuaning the truth. No, I don't think Chuaning so. could handle the truth. I don't know. I don't want to see it happen. I don't want to think about it. And Moran breaks down again because he also wishes that it could be that simple. Mm-hmm. And Moran is really trying to say something and he just can't do it. Like he keeps stuttering. And he's like, it's actually, well, I want to. Uh. And then Chuaning says, don't say it and kisses him. <sighs> I love, I love that so much. And it was the first time that he'd ever taken the initiative to kiss him on the lips. Oh, it's so good. And Moran ends up returning the kiss because maybe love was the harbor that gave him shelter from the pain. Fuck off. Hello? Nippon, the translation team, everyone involved here cooked. It's so good. Like, that is so romantic. Oh my god. And Moran, of course, gets turned on. Thank god. And <laughs> Chuaning reaches for his dick. And Moran is like, stop, we don't have to. And then Chuanik's like, why are you such an idiot? And is like, let me do it this time. <laughs> Please, I've been practicing mentally for weeks. And then Chuanik says, light the candle. I want to see you. Oh my god. What what a what a twisted turn we've t- we've twisted and turned to reach this point. And then Moran takes his hand and puts it to his chest and says, If there comes a day where my sins can no longer be pardoned, kill me right here. Not what I expected for bedroom talk, but okay. Like, Chuaning shivers and is like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you're clearly. Like, you're like holding on to this guy's dick and he says that. You're like, okay. <laughs> but then they keep kissing yeah. and they forget the strange things that he's saying and Moran starts jorking them off. 
when there is a bang at the door. <laughs> and this is the funniest scene ever. It is, it is ridiculous. I can't believe this happened. Shui Meng is like, can I come in? And Chu Anning says to Moran, like, oh, he sounds really concerned about something. And then Moran's like, what about me? <laughs> like, remember I came here and here crying, crying face a minute ago. And then Chu Anning's like, well, well, get under the bed. He really was like, Bina Shizen comes first. Yeah. Move out the way, Moran. But Moran stays in the bed under the covers. Insane in the behavior. And Shui Meng comes in and is like, have you noticed Moran's acting weird? <laughs> the worst possible conversation to be having when Moran is like inches away from your dick. It's like he's pursuing someone and he tries to explain that he saw Moran's necklace and it made him feel weird. And he knows <laughs> Chuani has a similar one and Moran told him it was the only one left. And then he says, Shizen, you'll always be our Shizen, right? And he's also like, also there's this Nangon Su guy. And like, <laughs> it's just kind of Shui Meng being like, I feel like I'm being left out from stuff. <laughs> Everyone seems to have a special relationship with Shizen except for me. Yeah. And then Chu Anning says, nothing will change, even with Nan Gong Tzu. And then Shui Meng asks for a handkerchief. <laughs> this is real, real qualm that he had. Actually, I feel like it's a little unfair if that Moron gets a handkerchief and I don't. And then Chu Anning says, I was going to make them for all of you. And then Moran is like, what the fuck? That was supposed to be just for me. <laughs> like they all, they all have their own relationships with Chu Anning. They like, all have their own hangups about Chu Anning. Yeah, like even outside their romantic stuff, like Moran's like petulance over like, that was supposed to be my special Shizun one, you know? And then Chu Anning suddenly starts pausing while he's talking. And oh God. And Shui Meng is like, are you okay? Wait, hold on a second before we get to that. <laughs> I'm trying to have a thought that isn't insane. The scene where like Shui Meng is talking and worrying about like losing his shiz in some way made me really sad and upset and it was like one of the moments where like i really thought about the future for them for the first time and like oh my gosh what's gonna happen like if their relationship comes out and like how is shui Meng gonna even handle that yeah i feel like he's gonna be like the most betrayed out of everyone definitely it's just like that lady on 90 day fiance you didn't tell her kids she was married for two whole years and then she sprung it on them in scotland and yeah. they were like we're in fucking scotland <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like that <sighs> yeah don't do that now go back to chuan getting yeah yeah okay so he's chuan starts pausing and Ch and shui Meng's like are you okay and it's because moran is feeling him up under the covers That's crazy and he literally times it for the right moment, for right before Chu Anning is going to speak again, before he puts his mouth on his dick. He is such an asshole, what the hell? But Chu Anning manages to answer despite ripping into Moran's skin. And he's like drawing blood, but Moran like loves the reaction, just the fact he can get a reaction out of him. And then Shui Meng asks if Chu Anning isn't feeling well, and Moran thinks, your Shizen is actually feeling pretty damn great right now. <laughs> such an asshole he really could not handle being ignored in this situation <laughs> and shui Meng finally leaves and chu anning slaps moran as he should i was like i felt that the slap was well earned yeah and it says that he didn't hit him too hard but I he also know. didn't hit him too soft <laughs> <laughs> then oh god the final page oh no they go at it and they're rubbing all over each other and chu anning came three times oh my jesus fucking christ and then chu anning straddles him and says, I said, let me take the lead this time. And no, Moran girl, is no. like, dude, you will not be able to ride a horse tomorrow if we do this. <laughs> so Chu Anning's like, fine, I'll do something else. And he takes Moran's dick in his mouth. Insane behavior. Also, I hope that gives him a reality check. And then Moran says, Wanning, I love you. It's only ever been you. Oh my God, why do they have to be so romantic in the most foul of moments? <laughs> and that's when the book ends insane absolutely insane <laughs> so i really feel like that was just so romantic like i was happy with the farm arc mm -hmm. but that was like the pre-relationship now we're in like their honeymoon phase yeah. like oh my gosh if we are to predict what's gonna happen next book i've heard it starts getting mad again i'm sure i'm sure like now that you said it i'm like oh my god nangong su and yoang are gonna die or something aren't they i don't think so maybe and then is Shui Meng gonna find out about the relationship? I feel like that's then... not gonna come till much later. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Yeah. 
Oh, I hope I hope it doesn't come till much later. I'm excited for more like crazy Tashi and Jun hijinks though. Like I hope, I hope that more of the plot gets explained. Do you think Chuani will get to fully experience <laughs> Moran's absolute unit before things go to shit and for some reason their honeymoon phase is disrupted forever? I don't think so. I don't, I, I don't think they're gonna ha be able to have normal sex before like the plot plot gets in the way. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this book club. Thank you so much for preparing the most amazing PowerPoint ever. That I'm gonna have so to step fun. up my game. <laughs> no, your PowerPoints are the best. I love yours the most. <laughs> well, if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to click subscribe and check out our playlist of all the other Dan May book reviews we've done. And thank you so much for supporting my channel. If you'd like to hang out with us every single Friday at 7 p.m., we do a members only live stream where we play Dan May related games. We just hang out and chat about our favorite characters. And it's a really great community with a bunch of amazing people. So be sure to click join down below to learn more about that. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.